In physics, we study motion and try to describe how objects move. We also take a look at forces, which cause motion to happen. The problem with looking at individual forces and how that force affects motion is difficult to do on any, in any normal situation on Earth because we're always dealing with friction. Friction can either be uh, two surfaces rubbing against each other, such as car wheels on the road, uh, or bike wheels, or any sort of wheel, or it can be something passing through a fluid, such as uh, drag that you get in water, or drag in the air, which is sometimes just called air resistance. What we want to do is try to create situations where we can minimize the effect of friction and really isolate how individual forces influence motion. So we may not be able to get rid of friction completely, but if we can make this effect as small as possible, we can really explore and investigate what individual forces do. Let's take a look at an example of this. Watch how a tennis ball moves when I roll it. The tennis ball didn't make it all the way down to the end of the table. Even though it's a round object, the effect of friction causes it to gradually slow down and come to a stop. This toy is called a hover ball, and it's going to help us take a look at motion with greatly reduced friction. This hover ball operates in a very similar principle to an air hockey table. With an air hockey table, you have a surface and air blows up from the surface and pushes up a plastic puck so that the uh, puck is getting pushed off the surface a little bit and it doesn't have as much contact with the, ice, uh, the air hockey surface and so it glides very smoothly. This operates on the same principle, although in this case the fan is on the inside of this toy. And when we turn it on, air blows out from the bottom and pushes it pushes the hover ball off the ground a little bit so that we have greatly reduced friction. Let's see what happens when I push the hover ball. The hover ball easily makes it to the end of the table. It looks like it really doesn't slow down, if it even slows down at all, as it glides along the table, smooth tabletops, reaching the end of the table. Notice how it moved pretty smoothly and steadily and didn't come to a stop until it hit these rugs. Let's take a look at the forces acting on the hover ball. In all scenarios, the Earth is always acting on the hover ball. And this is due to the force of gravity. The hover ball doesn't fall through to the center of the Earth, and there are two forces that are pushing up on the hover ball to keep it not moving in the up and down direction. One is the force of the air on the ball from the fan, pushing it upwards. But the hover ball is still touching the ground.
these two up forces balance out this down force. And as a result, there's no motion upwards or downwards as the hover ball is sitting there with the fan on. To start things off, I do apply a force on the ball, either from my hand, my foot, whatever I hit it with, to make it start moving. And with less contact of the ground on the ball, we have greatly reduced friction. So once I have applied my force, I am no longer touching the ball. The ball continues to move forward at a steady rate, which means that if there are no forces present, that the hover ball must move at a constant velocity. There still may be energy from the push I applied to the ball, which causes it to continue to move, but that force of me touching it and making it go forward is no longer there. So there's no agent or nothing that is causing it to move forward. So there just must be a natural tendency of the ball to continue moving forward. We call this tendency of objects to keep doing what they're doing inertia. Inertia also applies to when objects aren't moving. These forces are still in play right now on the hover ball, although there's no longer air acting on the ball since I have the fan off. So it is making more direct contact with the ground. And these two forces balance each other out. Let me draw them so that they actually look like they're balancing out. And so the tendency of this hover ball is to not move. And so it is also traveling at a constant velocity. It's traveling at zero meters per second because it has inertia. And so it wants to keep doing what it's already doing. I'm going to kick the hover ball to the right. Notice what direction it takes when it hits a barrier. I'm going to kick the hover ball to the left. Notice what direction it takes when it hits a barrier. We can overcome this inertia or the tendency of objects to want to keep doing what they're already doing by applying forces. This was evident when we had the hover ball moving and it bounced off against a wall. In this case, the hover ball was moving in this general direction. And then when it hit the wall, the wall applied a force on the ball and it went from going to the left off to the right. Same thing applies in the opposite direction. If we have a wall on this side, it will hit the wall and then a force will be applied and it will go to the left. However, in both scenarios, the ball continued to go forward and that is related to its inertia, its tendency to want to keep doing what it's already doing. So since it's already moving forward, even though you've changed its direction left and right, it still wants to continue to go forward because of its inertia. We've seen what happens when we apply just one single force to the hover ball and how it glides along the surface. Let's look and see what happens to the motion of the hover ball when we apply a constant force. To do that, I'm going to tape a piece of string to the hover ball. And to show that I'm pulling at a constant force, this string needs to remain taut like this. If it's not taut, then I'm not applying a force anymore. The, the string is just dangling and hanging there. A taut string shows that I'm applying a constant force.
we saw that after we applied a force to the ball, it moved forward at a constant velocity, where we just hit it or kicked it once, and it continued to move forward at a steady rate. We then looked at the string pulling the ball with a constant force, and in that situation, where we have a force of the string on the ball, and that constant force was evident when I was pulling the string and the string was completely taut. Uh, if the string got limp at all, that wasn't a constant force. As we saw, I had to constantly speed up to keep the string taut, and as a result, the hover ball had to constantly speed up too. In this situation, we're speeding up, we're changing our velocity, so when we have a constant force, we have acceleration. However, constant force doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be constant acceleration. In this situation here, there are constant forces of gravity pulling the ball down, the air pushing the ball up, and the ground pushing the ball up. So the key idea is that we need an unbalanced constant force to lead to acceleration. If the forces are balanced, then we'll have a situation of constant velocity. If we're considering the up and down motion of the hover ball, that velocity is zero meters per second, which is a constant velocity situation.